So we're starting now with the Debian derivatives uh, both. Uh, the buff moderator, buff uh, speaker proposer is uh, Paul Weiss. Okay, so um, the way I thought we would structure this is start off with some introductions from people who are involved in derivatives and Debian, and then some open discussion about issues and stuff, and finally we'll talk about some things that Debian is working on within this context including the front desk, the DEX, which is a little bit inactive at the moment, the census and our derivatives guidelines, which are um, kind of a how-to for running a derivative. Okay, so Gunnar, can you pass the mic around? I'm Paul Weiss. I'm working on the derivative census and a little bit of the other things that Debian is doing. I came to Debian because of Gnopics, so yeah, derivatives are the reason why I'm here in Debian. Mm, I guess the reason why I'm here in Debian, apart of using Debian, is probably because of Tails, which is another Debian derivative. I'm Stefan Rivera, I'm a Debian developer and Ubuntu developer. I don't do too much on the derivatives community, but I sit in both communities, so that's why I'm here. I'm Jonathan, also uh, from Ubuntu and also in Ubuntu. I'm Jonathan, too, <laughs> and I'm being here by interesting. I'm Daniel, I work on Debian and the derivative, and I'm generally interested in the topic. I'm Ansgar and I'm just here out of interest as well. I just use Debian mostly and well sometimes I actually use Ubuntu, so. Anyone else want to say something? Where is Luis? Hi, I'm Fernando. Uh, I, I'm here uh, because I'm interested in the retroalimentation between Ubuntu and, and, and Debian uh, called Odnovo now. Uh, part of the text. Okay, so, um, so does anyone have anything they want to, issues they want to bring up or things that have worked well or? Perhaps in Trigari you can talk about some Tails things? Well, um, perhaps it's a bit early to discuss that because I have things I have in mind are for Wizzy plus one probably. But given that we, when we'll meet again, we'll have been working on Wizzy plus one for a while already, so perhaps it makes sense. Right now? Okay. Okay. Um, I've been working on Apermore integration into Debian. Apermore is a mandatory access control framework, a kind of security thing, you know? And oop, it, it happens that Ubuntu has been using this a bit for a while and using it more and more, and it's been out of three at the kernel level, it used to be, but it's not anymore, and we'll get uh, a Palmer enabled kernel in Wizzy. And some very minimal Apermore support in, the in user space. Uh, I really would like this support to be improved a lot in Debian during the Wizzy plus one life uh, release cycle. But it's given how it worked since a few months, it's pretty clear that it can't happen just by efforts done by a lone Debian developer. So I think I will go reach the Ubuntu people and say, hey, you want to reduce your delta, presumably? 
and we want that in Debian. Let's make this our release goal and come help us and let's maintain these profiles together. I'm not sure how this integrates with the existing DEX and other pieces of infrastructure. The technical details probably can be left for later. It seems like a good project for people doing the DEX, Ubuntu DEX stuff to work on. Cool. Uh, Paul, I have a question here from uh, Kevin Mark. He okay. asks uh, whether the, uh, uh, is there any derivatives having any plans for UEFI? UEFI? Um, I guess Ubuntu has their plans for UEFI. UEFI, yeah. UEFI U Maybe you can say that something um, about that. So this isn't anything that I know too much about, but I know our CD is already supported and it works. It's been supports been added to Debian installer as far as I know. So presumably the patches are in the BTS. Um, secure boots you can read all about on. Uh, we have one late arrival. Maybe you'd like to introduce yourself. Um, ah. Microphone. Well, I think at the end. Um, my name is Luis. My name is Luis. Um, I'm from Venezuela. Um, me and one partner are here from uh, Canaima Distribution. Um, we're looking forward to share uh, experiences, uh, things we should do, things we shouldn't do, um, how we can collaborate with each other um, in our work. So, that's it. Um, for those people who don't know the Kanaima distribution, could you say something about it? Of course. Um, well, Kanaima um, started around 2008. It was uh, version 1.0 1 po 1 was based on Edge, I think. Um, version 2.0 was on Lenny. Then uh, current um, version, uh, stable version 3.0 was uh, is on Squeezy. And as you see, we're synchronized with um, stable uh, Debian distribution. So uh, version four will be on, on Wizzy. Uh, basically, Canaima is promoted by Venezuelan government for uh, several projects. One of its uh, deri derivatives that is uh, kind of famous in the country is the Canaima Educativo, Educational Canaima uh, for the children. So the government puts Canaima in those uh, laptops for, um, yeah, education and uh, the children, basically. There are uh, almost two million of those computers in the country. So. That's what basically Canaima does. Luis, uh, we have a question from the IRC, again from Kevin Mark. Uh, he asked whether collaboration uh, means to share the language translation or to use a common server, or if you have a similar uh, uses like those uh, in telecentros. I mean, what's, what's the collaboration? And, the, uh, and I would add what's the main like uh, uniqueness, the main difference uh, you, you have with uh, Debian? Well, um, basically we need, uh, well, Canaima goes to primarily uh, the um, National Public Administration of Venezuela. Although the, there are others, uh, versions, versions of Canaima that uh, goes to general public, but uh, 
basically we need newer software in uh, Canaima, and as we base on stable Debian stable, we need uh, backports. So uh, also we need special uh, specialized software that otherwise we would have to wait uh, two years or the uh, main Deb Debian cycle to to for it to be in in, in Debian stable. So we added. Uh, locally, and I didn't I didn't understand the collaboration part. Yeah, well, the the exact uh, wording uh, he says collaboration equals share language translators or use a common server, or you have similar uh, uses. Well, the usage part is covered, but uh, yeah, he says uh, right. So yeah, um, we haven't. Um, how do I say this? Um, I mean, we, we're starting now uh, to retribute our work to Debian. Actually, that's why we're here. So, uh, no, we haven't done much of uh, uh, collaboration to the our father distribution. So, uh, but we're starting to do it now. We're starting to uh, get in packages in shape so that they uh, start being in Debian and retributing that work. Okay, uh, slightly bouncing again to the well, the, the topic on Ubuntu that was uh, already mentioned. Uh, Kusanagi uh, uh, asks. Uh, is it too crazy to have some kind of PPA integration with Debian? Actually, wouldn't it be nice to have some kind of PPA in place for Debian to allow work as a pre-integration in the project? Uh, he was questioned whether the, it's a pertinent uh, question for this talk. He's, he answers, I feel there's a lot of packaging potential out there that Debian is not taking advantage of. Maybe Ubuntu PPA are not what Debian needs, but maybe Ubuntu packagers can have an easy transition packaging upstream. So I don't know if you want to comment on this. Um, again, I'm, I'm not a canonical person, but uh, so Ubuntu canonicals often been asked if we could have support Debian or other derivatives on P Ubuntu PPA or Launchpad PPAs, and the answer has been no because it's a fairly expensive service to run and they don't want it to cost any more than it's already costing. There have been fairly frequent talks about PPAs and Debian, which is probably a far more appropriate answer to this problem. But the last I heard that was going to be for Debian developers only. So by the time you get to that point, you probably already integrated a lot of things back into Debian. just while uh, Paul finishes writing this. Uh, I, yeah, I know th uh, that uh, as far as I follow the discussions, uh, having PPAs in Debian would be, uh, as you say, restricted to Debian developers, mainly uh, because of uh, the legal revision uh, that w we cannot just allow a service to be open to the general public without reviewing the content and redistributing. I mean, uh, Canonical has decided to run with the risks of that, uh, the, uh, well, the, so far Debian has decided not to. There are also other issues with uh, providing PPAs for all architectures to the general public because the well as build itself is not very secure, so actually you can break out in various ways. Um, so you need to run builds for PPAs in a virtualized environment and I think not all architectures are capable of this. Um, but I think there have been discussions about if it is legally possible to provide uh, PPAs to the public in Debian. Uh, but, well, nothing really happens so far. And yes, it, it is not uh, the priority, I think.
So are there any other topics someone would like to bring up? Or should we move on to the um, derivatives initiatives that Devian has been working on? Would the people in Ubuntu like to say anything about the collaboration between Debian and Ubuntu? <laughs> or any other distribution? Yeah. So uh, me as an Ubuntu developer, when I'm working with new Ubuntu developers, or actually any Ubuntu developers, um, the first question when reviewing an upload is, has everything that's uh, Ubuntu is de deviating from Debian here been pushed to Debian? If not, why not? Is there a way to get there in the future? Um, I think that's a fairly common view amongst Ubuntu developers these days, at least the community ones. It, in a derivative, it's a hell of a lot easier to keep maintaining your distribution if you push as much upstream as possible. When you're maintaining a patch set on top of something else, it's your work. If you push it upstream, it becomes upstream's problem. <laughs> and it'll be far more widely tested and probably work a lot better. So that yeah, in uh, Ubuntu, we also have lots of people who want to fix bugs and upload new packages into Ubuntu. And then we want to say, well, you know, it will actually be easier to get it in Debian directly. Otherwise, well, like Stefan says, we have other patch to maintain. Well, we have a package that only exists in Ubuntu and not in Debian. And we tell people, if you get it into Debian, well, you other distributions and Debian users benefit from this as well. Um, but it's sometimes difficult to know where to send them within Debian. Um, we can sometimes, we try to send them to Debian mentors, but it's not always the best place um, because it's sometimes a bit scary for some people and um, they're not sure how to interact with the Debian community necessarily. And I'm not sure if it might be useful to have some kind of system for that because uh, uh, we'd like to make it easier to send people who want to actually contribute to Ubuntu to Debian and so that they can get their work in uh, the proper way. Okay. Is there any other topics? Daniel, would you like to say something? No? <laughs> So in the audience, uh, apart from the people in the circle, is anyone else involved in derivatives? Show of hands. No? Canaima, yeah. Uh, in Canaima, um, we have another thing. Like, I think in Venezuela we have almost three and four million lactose because we have a an public industry for May computer and all computer. Uh, are released with Canaima, okay? So it's a lot of computer. And we have another project in this moment. Um, and I am the person from a way promo, 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 promo promoting? promoting this project, okay? Uh, we have. Um, industry for mobile device and we have in Venezuela almost three industry for mobile device and we need and we are working uh, trying to get um, or trying to, collab to collaborate with another project like Gecko or like open web device and we are uh, trying to work Debian and Canaima in the mobile device industry in this moment, okay? It's a, 
a, ra a great project, and we are working very hard in this in this moment. Okay, regarding the mobile devices thing, um, later in DevConf there is a boff about Debian mobile stuff. Um, uh, Odex isn't here, but yeah, I will be at that talk, that boff as well. Um, and there have been quite a few, well not quite a few, there have been a couple of mobile distributions. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of MAMO in the N900. That was a Debian derivative. Um, yeah. So, have um, any of the people involved with derivatives had any issues trying to contribute back to Debian and collaborate with Debian? Is this on? Is this on? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, prime example, uh, if you want LSIP support in dpackage, dpackage maintainers tell you that they don't want it. Uh, because they already have LSAT MA in it, and uh, we are transitioning to XSET, so they want to get rid of LSAT MA. Unfortunately, or well, the, the patch for having LSIP support in it is like uh, less than 10 lines or so, so it, it doesn't really hurt, but for political reasons, you can't have it because the package maintainers say they don't want it, even though other people want to use it. Uh, and this sort of things um, is understandable, um, but it's hurting. Um, progress on other stuff, so uh, it would be nice to have some sort of way to get this uh, stuff into Debian, even though um <laughs> the maintainer doesn't like it, uh, but it's just something that doesn't harm him. Uh, does that link mean linking new libraries and DPKG? It's just it does he asked if it um, uh, needs a new library. No, it doesn't. It just calls LSIP uh, as is done with exit. We do have the technical committee to resolve those sort of issues, but it's probably a bit of a heavyweight thing for that particular patch. Um, So, uh, Stefano, you mentioned before. Just Sorry. for the record, I'm, I'm not blaming deep package maintainers at all. Uh, it's totally understandable why they don't want it. Just from a um, point of view outside of Debian, it's very hard um, to deal with that because that means you basically are always forking uh, deep package forever and um, porting your patch forward for every upload. Microphone. One thing I have, have found slightly hard sometimes is to have release critical bugs fixed in stable. Uh, it happened a few times that well, once the bug is, is fixed in unstable, the maintainer does not care anymore that their packages does not work on squeeze. It's not that often, but I think we probably need more publicity and awareness about the the various efforts to to track and and fix RC bugs in stable. So um, one of the new things in Debian that we have is the Debian maintainer dashboard. It's kind of like a to-do list that tracks which release things are fixed in. And if it's if there's an RC bug in stable, then it'll put a to-do item. Also, Rhonda has been working on stable release bu critical bugs. Maybe you'd like to say something. Um, yes, um, I think there's still sort of yeah, there's a lot of misunderstanding with respect to version tracking and how it's properly working. I'm working on a Debian Devil Announce mail to explain it better because actually it's fairly easy, but 
it's also fairly easy to get some things wrong if you don't know what's going on with tags and things like that. Um, and I think we still need to get people to better understand that stable actually is a release that we are meant to support properly and that it's not that hard anymore uh, to get fixes into stable. I think it, it's, it's not like that since several years now, but it's still stuck in the heads of some people that it's almost impossible to get any fixes into stable, which just isn't true anymore. Yeah, just a word of experience from fixing bugs and stable. So I do that sometimes for my own packages, which works really well. And for some other packages uh, with that other people are maintaining, um, it helps preparing the patch, of course. And sometimes people agree uh, to prepare the upload if you handle talking to the release team because they don't have time or are busy with other things. Uh, so, um, is there anything else on the RC bug topic? No? Maybe we can move, go back to the issue mentioned by the Ubuntu guys before um, Debian mentors being scary. Um, we the Did you attend the BOF earlier in the week? Uh, no, actually. Yeah. Um, so, in general, we want that to not be the case. So, could you elaborate on what p kind of things people are saying about the process? Well, um, I don't think, well, I've heard people say that it's scary. I've followed the process too, and I didn't think it was necessarily scary, but uh, um, it is definitely very slow, which is purely a manpower thing, Fair and enough. I think that's not an easy problem to solve. Um, but one thing that was encouraging in the um, in the sponsoring session was that a few DDs actually said, I want to be a sponsor, how do I get involved? So it's, it seemed like not everyone is as aware of that there's a need for DDs to sponsor things like they, sh like they should be. And maybe if there's some campaign, uh, um, maybe even just an email every six months or year to uh, Debian Developer announce saying that, hey, we kind of would like people to help with sponsoring and uh, would you like to get involved, please? contact this address or whatever. Um, so a reason I could think that Debian Mentors would be considered pretty scary if you're a new contributor is if you're a new contributor, you're normally contributing a new package. These get reviewed very thoroughly by the sponsor trying to help you upload them and they will often get reams and reams of feedback and that is daunting. And it's because the person who's reviewing the package is trying to help you and make you the best maintainer of it that they can. But it's also a long painful process. I don't know if there is an easy solution to that. We don't want to accept horrible packages into the archive, and we want to teach our new maintainers to do the best job that we can. So there is going to be some difficulty, and it's, be it's best to be clear to the people that are starting this process that it, you're going to have to do a bit of work, and, but once you get through it, we'll help you do the best you can. Well, from, uh, from what I've seen, I think the one of the uh, frequent uh, complaints about uh, uh, sponsoring being uh, being a pain is that uh, DDs don't uh, check very often. Many DDs don't don't check at all this uh, list of pending packages. So, for example, I don't do. I don't do it because uh, yeah, I, I'm very bad managing my own time, and I have a fee. Uh, I mean, if I have some free time, I prefer to uh, make my packages a bit better, which uh, really needs some logging from from me. Uh, but uh, uh, pa part of this uh, problem is because I have I see all of the packages from all of the fields that are waiting for somebody op to upload. I know this is not the buff for uh, this, but uh, since you're taking notes, maybe it could be a nice addition that a, a prospective packages to be included uh, via mentors uh, were to be categorized by something like the DevTag system. So there can be a matching if somebody uploads a package, uh, a package to be mentored, uh, the, the, the developers who are maintaining similar packages can be noticed 
uh, expressly. So there is some work going on with the mentors. <laughs> there are a bunch of Google Summer of Code students and lots of other people who are working on Deb Expo and doing that sort of matching and stuff. So, yeah. I'm a genius. Yeah. <laughs> a um, late genius. I think there will be an announcement about the, when the features are fully implemented. Um, so it's 12.30 maybe? Oh, uh, yeah, here Laney mentions uh, we should get less mentors and more packaging teams. That's also, uh, I mean, many of the uh, uh, teams have uh, worked on have become uh, great doors to welcome new developers, to get them involved and uh, to avoid them having to wait for mentorship. Okay, um, so it's 12.30 now. Maybe we should move on to the stuff that Debian's doing for derivatives. Yes? Unless anyone's got other issues or positive things to bring up. Oh, we've got one over here. Yeah, I just want to ask about the... Um, now that there's this extra effort to involve derivatives and the, um, the communication back to, um, to upstream um, for many of the packages and, and what upstream needs to, to be aware of now that these extra efforts are going on, wh whether th this is relevant in any way for release dates. Um, like obviously different derivatives are releasing on different schedules um, that can impact um, yeah, when th should upstream be releasing and there are probably other issues as well in how things are communicated because uh, you could have different derivatives pulling upstream in different directions in a worst case scenario. Um, so I guess there isn't really any sort of coordination with um, communicating between Debian derivatives and upstream. It's more like individual maintainers are co uh, involved in the upstream project and the community and they inform people about their release dates and whatnot. Um, so yeah, there's nothing. There's no coordination of that sort of thing at the moment. Um, maybe that's something we could work on within the context of the, f the Debian derivatives stuff. Um, Um, yeah. Do you want to add something to the Gobi about that? So elaborate more about your ideas and we'll move on to the next stuff. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, this we Debian has a number of initiatives reaching out to our derivatives and trying to bring them back closer to Debian and give them a space to collaborate with, with each other. The first one is the Debian Derivatives Front Desk, a mailing list IC channel for discussions about issues um, and coordination and other things. Uh, it's not particularly active at the moment, but yeah, it's a good place to get help if you need help coordinating with Debian or discussing issues and trying it um, and figuring out how to get involved with Debian, that sort of thing. Um, so there's, if you're involved in Debian, you can help us help derivatives, so join the list and ISC channel. So the next um, project that Debian is working on is DEX. Um, this is had pretty limited work so far. Um, the first the main thing that happened was a review of a bunch of Ubuntu old patches and all of those were successfully merged or rejected and reviewed and all that sort of thing. That was all, that worked pretty well. But um, more recently, more recently there hasn't been much work on DEX and I think maybe we need some infrastructure stuff um, set up to make that easier and working. Um, the next thing is 
the derivative census. This is my pet project. Um, there hasn't really been any co contributions from other people apart from the excellent people who have registered in the census and maintain their census pages. So the way it works is each derivative has a representative and they come to the Debian wiki and create a wiki page. Click that button up there. Um, and then they fill out um, a wiki page with some data. Let's click on the Ubuntu one. So here we have a whole bunch of data about Ubuntu that can be useful to Debian developers and other derivatives as well, of course. So if a Debian maintainer sees that there's a patch for some package in Ubuntu and they want to go and ask someone about it, they can look at this information and find out different things about Ubuntu and all the stuff. And part of that is the sources list of the derivative. Um, and so from that sources dot list, we go to we um, we download all those source packages and we create patches so that the derivatives themselves don't have to do it. Ubuntu has done that for their packages already, but it makes sense to do it derivative wide rather than every derivative having to re-implement that system. Uh, what? Got to not do typos. So, derivatives patches, and yeah, these are this is generated on the snapshot.devin.org machine, which has the whole history of the Devin project, every source package, every binary package. Um, it needs a lot of this stuff is not really ready for consumption by Devin direct ad developers yet. There are some limitations. Um, yeah, and I'm slowly working on that to improve them. So the next project that we have is the derivatives guidelines. Um, oh I should go back to the other one one sec. So the other thing about the census is the integration of the information that's gathered through these wiki pages into the Debian infrastructure. Um, the first thing that I did was Planet Debian Derivatives, which just aggregates all the blogs of all the derivatives into one planet. And I'm reading that and I'm finding it really useful. So I'd encourage people to subscribe to it. To um, And then you can contact people who are doing interesting things. Um, that was the first thing. And then the second thing was the patches stuff. Um, we've also integrated the Debian into th we've also integrated bug linkages into the wiki so that if you link to a bug you can tell whether it's closed or not just by looking at the wiki. Um, There's some other ideas for integrating stuff into the Debian infrastructure like UDD, packages.debian.org but I haven't worked in on any of that stuff yet. So the next, I should get, I'm going on to the next project. This is the derivatives guidelines. It's basically a how-to for running a derivative and ways in which Debian would like derivatives to operate. Um, so it includes things like changing branding, repositories, key rings, of course the Debian trademark, branding, um, and popcorn and all sorts of stuff so it's it's a good resource and if you have questions about it or suggestions please bring that up on the mailing list um, and here we have some links about derivative stuff so if anyone has any more questions I think that's the end we've got five minutes Four minutes.
So I saw one of the topics in your gabinet was uh, uh, branding and artwork. Um, so this this cycle, I did some work on the desktop base package, which includes all the usual artwork like the Plymouth theme and GNOME and KDE themes, and it seems to contain pretty much all of the Debian branding. So if you want to not have Debian branding, it seems like all that you need to do is replace this with something else. So I'm not really sure what the exact issue on that is, and if you could the elaborate. Uh, desktop base is one of the packages. Mm -hmm. There are other packages that include their own Debian logo or something. So this is one of the initiatives we should do for Wheezy Plus One is look at what exactly we need to do to get rid of all that stuff and separate it out into a separate package. Yeah. Anything else? I guess. Uh. I, I have a question for Canaima developers. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, Debian is not fully translated to, to Spanish. And, and maybe uh, for uh, Canaima, they, they, uh, they did some work in translation to the requirements of, of the stop in government uh, schools. and. And more, I, is it possible to to uh, contribute that translations and that material to Debian? Is there a plan for that? Or yeah, it's, it's very possible. Um, we have a we have a, a a strong because in this moment the Venezuela government have uh, support for free software movement, okay? And uh, we are and we we are uh, working in get a lot of project for try to get funds for work for free for uh, free software activity, okay? Um, but we need, okay? We need work. In infrastructure for make more easy this uh, collaboration. Okay, uh, for example, in Canaima, we have a lot of um, uh, traduction. Okay, of uh, translation. Sorry, it's translation for software. Uh, for example, um, report. Report, uh, report book ng is a, a, a Greek tool, but the interface is in English. Okay, um, this is a, a little project for get this tool in Spanish for Canaima firstly, and uh, uh, return this work for Debian. Okay, so we need to get a way for share if for between the Debian team Spanish, uh, uh, Spanish Debian Debian team Spanish translation and Canaima. This is a Greek job. This is a Greek project. Work in it. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Um, we're starting to do the the collaboration. So. Um, the way the translations are given to Debian is not, not the same as packages, right? There's a team. Uh, so we'll just have to integrate to that team. So for Spanish, this is the language for translation stuff. Right. You can join the, lang the list right. and introduce yourselves and get involved. Of course. Yeah. We'll do. Um, Christian Peria is here. He's the Debian yeah. installer um, coordinator for translation stuff. You should probably talk to him while yeah. you're here. So I think time's up. Um, if you want to talk with me about derivative stuff during DevConf, just
just come and say hi. And thanks for everyone for coming. <laughs>